Who are you? Who is Kaushal Fernando? I'm an actress, uh, a teacher, theater director, and a mother <laughs> and a wife. <laughs> All. <laughs> My mother is the first actress who uh, got the opportunity of uh, playing in that country theater. The editor can make you or break you. So she used to say, "Are you you crazy, you child? Why why do you all?" I said, "What what what are you talking? You are like you know, for for us, gods are them." Why weren't your first ever movie is still not streamed? <laughs> uh, actually, what happened in that was uh, there was a technical issue. Very good morning, evening uh, for everyone who is watching us from all over the world. and it's a nag event brought to you by Renaissance Sri Lanka now we are about to introduce you another fascinating character uh, who knows um, about the culture of Sri Lanka in her own angle uh, which we will be exploring in a bit and she has a very rich uh, history and i would not want to go into uh, her history more and more because we would want to uh, Hear it from herself. So let me introduce. Um, I would say legendary Kaushalya Fernando. Hi, Kaushalya. Hi, hi, Sir. How are you? Um, getting on <laughs> with the <laughs> pandemic. It's, it's, it's very tough, isn't it? Like it's very yeah. tough for everyone to like get on with the things as like we we want to get back to the. new no as in like get back to the normal but it's definitely going to be a new normal say so we need yeah. to get adjusted isn't it yes yeah, especially for artists it's very difficult because who would think of performing arts at this time of the uh, yeah. you know the day and time uh, so it's difficult anyway right so <laughs> yeah. let's let's get on with the conversation so we it will be a very uh, relaxing conversation so we we don't need like certain boundaries to be set if i ask you a question about how how would you introduce yourself who are you who is kaushalya fernando yeah uh, i will have uh, a few definitions <laughs> uh, one thing is okay. i'm an actress uh, a teacher uh, a theater director and a mother <laughs> and a wife <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I was expecting those two, especially from you. So, um, so let me let me start uh, from the the artist part of you. Uh, a little bit about your history. How, what was the history for you like to get into arts? What was the triggering point that uh, you decided or that you you thought, okay, I'm I'm going to take this gig or I'm going to be an artist? What was that point? Yes, it was like this. My mother uh, was uh, actually both my parents were involved in the cultural revival of Sri Lanka when they were in the university of Peradeniya. Uh, the great Professor Sarachandra uh, was um, the one of the pioneers of revival of culture of theatre, especially in Sri Lanka. So both of them were involved in theatre uh, work in at the university of Peradeniya. Mm, and my mother carried it on and my father okay. uh, became a um, civil servant while my mother carried it on so it was in the environment in the house so, so uh, I, i think this is the this is the best point that we uh, introduce your mother and father um, as for the greats they are um, uh, the great uh, somalata subasinghe was your mother and uh, lionel fernando was your father who was a diplomat who was a uh, well known character in sri lanka like civil servant side of your father didn't you get any influence from that uh, definitely definitely my father was in love with the country both my parents they always wanted to serve the country my mother wanted to do art for the people you know right. they were more outside the house <laughs> home than inside uh, working for the people uh, so it was imbibed in me i mean i also got uh, so interested because they were um, so they were the people that i associated this is what i heard all the time so yeah, uh, yeah. 
So that's what I think. A little bit about your mother too, because you said uh, you mentioned about the history of your father's work. Uh, maybe a bit of your a, a highlight into your mother's uh, career um, as an actress, as an artist. Uh... Yeah, uh, actually, she, I, as I said, she, I, she started with uh, Professor Sarat Chandra, and uh, at the uh, Peradeni University, uh, she was. Uh, they had a. They have this. Uh, uh, the amphitheater at Peradeni. It was inaugurated with the. With a play by Professor Sarat Chandra, one of, one of his experimental plays, and my mother is the first actress who uh, got the opportunity of uh, playing in that amphitheater. So la, gra gradually, she developed herself to become an actress, theater, cinema, and teledrama. But more than that, uh, she pursued on uh, working for children, doing theater for children, writing plays for children working with children, educating children through theatre. That was her forte. She was a pioneer in that. Yes. Right. Uh, well, a lot of Sri Lankans, all of us in Sri Lanka knows about your mother, father, and you as well. Um, but at which point that Kaushalya Fernando character decides, this is going to be my career, or this these are the options for my career, if it's more than one? Yes. Uh, uh, when I, when my mother always went for theater practices, rehearsals, I always uh, used to tag along with her and watch rehearsals. And I used to be, I used to like uh, help her to remember her, learn her words at home. And I used to love reading the scripts, whether it's cinema, teledrama or theater. So, and I used to always listen to the discussions my mother had with veteran theater directors, the film directors, and they were always inside and out of our house. Some were even living in our house. Uh, uh, people like Dharma Sena Patiraj, uh, the veteran great uh, film director. So, um, I, it, it was not that I had a goal set. Actually, I wanted to be a teacher. That was my goal. But gradually, I was um, absorbed into my mother's children's theater uh, group. And from there, gradually, I uh, got involved in theater. And then uh, veteran theater director Sugata Pahalvi Silva wanted me in his uh, major production of Marasad. And I played a major role in that. From that onwards, uh, so I had, I didn't look back <laughs> because I also got passionately uh, interested, involved, and it's a passion for me. Acting is a passion for me. What are the specific characteristics in, in theater and uh, that are different from uh, cinema? Yes, actually, the, I, I've been uh, lecturing uh, uh, the Bhairadini University undergraduates these past few days online. Uh, and I was also thinking and uh, discussing with them which, uh, which is more difficult or <laughs> which is, you know, whether it's theatre or cinema. I think both are difficult in two different ways. Both are easy in two different ways. Uh, so um, at the moment, uh, for the past six to seven years, I have uh, been more involved in the cinema than theater. So I was, I thought cinema was much, uh, it's, uh, it's convenient, it's easy uh, because the camera is there near you and the subtleties can be given. If you are, if you are a, a, a creative person, uh, the subtle, these can be given because the camera is just next to you. And also you can go into one or two takes if the take is not good. But in the theater, uh, you have to give a lot of energy, the voice, and you can't cheat. You can't cheat on the right. stage. You have to be a trained actor. In cinema, you can, the, the editor can make you or break you. <laughs> the right, editor right right but and, in uh, theater yeah in theater you have to go full package when you start from uh, the first scene you have to go on uh, till up to the final scene 
and you have to present yourself by yourself. No can nobody can support you. But cinema, there are a lot of supporters. So with the rise of uh, the television and the era of television drama, so both these sectors, as in like the, the theater in Sri Lanka, as well as cinema is affected to uh, a certain extent. And I think mostly it has affected, this is my personal view, uh, but it has mostly affected the theater side of it. But do you feel that in the same way? Uh, I mean, you've seen the gradual development or the evolution of Sri Lankan theater from the 80s to like from the 70s on 70s onwards to 80s, 90s and what it is now. Uh, how much drama was a part of Sri Lankan life? Actually, when you think about the 70s, 80s, uh, theatre was part of our culture. I mean, people would come, love to come to see theatre. Theatre of Henry Jayasena, Gunasena Galapati, Sarachandra, um, uh, sorry, I forgot, Naribana, uh, Jayavad, uh, uh, the uh, director who did Naribana, I, uh, I can't remember. I'm sorry, really sorry about it. Um, so uh, a lot of people, because that was the, the culture they had at that time was theater, cinema, novels, reading and painter, painting, etc. After the television came, they they had some, some kind of so-called uh, storytelling kind of thing inside the house. And they got attracted to this whether it was it had the quality or not they were it was convenient by the, they come home after work or in the house you, you open this uh, this box and then you sit there and you listen to stories the stories are the same that thing is the same matters are the same but they didn't mind with that i think gradually the, the people who go uh, to see theater and cinema gradually decreased. So you can't only blame the spectators. I think the creativity also has to develop because the, the, the director should, should know how to attract this audience. How, what do you do to attract this audience? Uh, right. what, what special can you do? How creative can one be to bring this audience back to the theater? But after the war, there came a, a, a trend of uh, comedies. Yeah. People were going for comedies after the war. Uh, that was after like uh, 2007, 8, 7, 8 right. I think. Uh, so, but with the pandemic, uh, now you don't know whether they will come back. I don't know when they will come back. Uh, but recently, uh, just before this uh, uh, lockdown, past lockdown, beginning of uh, beginning of August, uh, there was a theater festival and it was organized. There were plays uh, from uh, from the beginning of August till the end. There were plays going to be shown at uh, the Lionel Bend, uh, and right. uh, the, the for the first few plays, there was a full crowd and the tickets were gone. But once the pandemic was getting worse, uh, people stopped buying the tickets. So that shows that people are still interested. People are interested in seeing theatre. Uh, so even after the pandemic, let's say there would be a time that we would be able to get on with our normal life, that uh, new normalcy or, but if we do good theater, creative theater, people would come. I, I have a feeling. Right. So how much now you are teaching kids and the budding actors to get onto uh, the stage and then perform at their best. Uh, why and when did you decide to continue or like, you know, start your own work, I would say, um, on this, uh, this area? About, with the playhouse? Yes, actually when my mother started the playhouse, uh, one, of her, uh, one of her plans was to uh, train actors, training actors 
uh, uh, getting young people interested in art, uh, performing arts. And uh, so uh, some of them, we absorb them into our theater group, uh, those who we train, and some uh, would go into other uh, ventures. So gradually, once my mother uh, was, you know, she had to travel with my father because my father was a diplomat also. Uh, so when she had to travel, I would take over. And gradually, I, it became my kind of, you know, I loved teaching. You know, it's not, I would not say teaching, guiding them uh, to uh, become actors. So becoming an actor in Sri Lanka is not only acting. There are so many other things that you have to, uh, you know, uh, guide them with. So uh, I gradually started my own classes uh, of actor training. Yes. And uh, especially speaking about uh, the, the women in Sri Lanka, how much was a drama part of um, women's life in Sri Lanka? As in like, especially if you talk about the, the characters, uh, how has it shaped uh, women's lives and how was it a part of, I mean, giving empowerment to um, females as in like women in general? Uh, yes, uh, when I, I would like to go back to the period where my mother started becoming an actress as when she was in the university. At that time, I think my um, people like my mother had a lot of issues, you know, by my grandparents. I mean, it was a shame to be on stage and, you know, acting, etc. Uh, so, but uh, people like my mother, Trilisha Gunodana, then Ayurangani Sera Singh, uh, you know, these are the people who came forward uh, strong, Rukmani Devi, and they, they, they showed, I mean, they wouldn't look back, you know. This empowered, uh, I think, uh, uh, actors, actresses, uh, by seeing educated women uh, being actors, you know. Uh, and also, they, I would say, this is the Sri Lankan culture I'm talking about. They were married, they were wives, they were mothers, but still they went on acting uh, and being actresses. So that gave women uh, some encouragement to come into the, uh, onto the stage and cinema. And uh, gradually people like my mother uh, gave the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, I would say they, uh, they were like uh, pioneers to give uh, women uh, the encouragement to direct uh, cinema, direct theater, be compose music and so many other things. So today there are universities offering uh, performing arts as a degree. So there are yeah. lots of women who are in the theater and cinema working as, I would say, camera, um, cameramen, camera women, and yeah. editors, uh, assistant directors, makeup artists, so many. So I think now, of course, there's no difference where yeah. women and Men. Uh, yeah. Concerned. Now there's. I. I. We also don't see any stigma or taboo against. Uh, you know, no. women being on stage anymore. I yes. think. Um. There. There has to be a, a part of. You know. Probably a part of television. Part of social media has. All has to. You know. That. There, there's been certain contributions. Uh. In. In this aspect. Uh. Of empowering women to come. Uh. Come live on on television. Come live on stage. So yes. I think it has been good. And uh, especially you mentioned that uh, now it has also like certain uh, jobs such as, you know, the working in camera editing and uh, working in the crew were yeah. sometimes yeah. dedicated to men uh, yes. historically. And now there are women taking up these jobs. And, and I think it's fantastic. And uh, you mentioned a couple of Sri Lankan greats uh, during your co our conversation, like Irangani Sera Singh. How do you feel to be, you know, a part of the crew and even being a main actor, actress in uh, Borodi Epokuna, I think, uh, with uh, Ayurangiti Sera Singh in presence. How, how did you feel? Like they were your mother's friends, they were your mother's colleagues, greats in Sri Lanka. Uh, 
Tell us yes, a little I, bit about it. Yes, uh, when uh, the director Satyajit, uh, uh, she he revered uh, uh, Irangani Sera Singer, you know, and Irangani Sera Singer was the epitome of a real Sri Lankan actress. She worked on the English theater and uh, uh, cinema and uh, so they were they were our pioneers you know they paved the way for us to come on to this uh, these um, art forms so uh, when she was cast as this uh, i think she was a teacher there and i was so i was so honored to be with her in the same movie and uh, sit with her and you know so she used to say, Are you you're crazy, you child? Why, why do you all? I said, what, what, what are you talking? You are like, you know, for, for us, gods are them, you know. Yeah. For but she's also known to be such a sweetheart uh, in, such in her personality. Simple, such yeah. a simple person. My God, she's like an auntie. She's a, she's a mother. She's an auntie, you know. And uh, she used to support and advise me and, you know. She used to love me. So, I mean, right. she's a, so such a lovable character. People like Ayrangani Sera Singha, mm. my mother, and those are the people who were the examples for us. And so that gave us the uh, encouragement and also to take the risk even in the, among in our culture to do a, a character like Borodhi you know? So... Right. Yeah, so I mean, uh, they would always, she would always talk so much high about my uh, character in and what how I played it. So yeah. that 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 gives us the uh, some kind of uh, uh, importance, so that yeah. the society also uh, sees it as a serious, serious yeah. performance, serious movie, serious character. You know, in in our culture, it's very difficult to uh, do such uh, things. You know, you know, yeah. very difficult. Yeah. And and I think uh, I think it, it was one of the uh, I think probably the best movie that I've uh, seen that where a nudity was used just for the purpose of the character, and then there was nothing that I I don't think uh, even from the audience, as in like from the viewership, I don't think they would. Um, they would that would even be controversial in their minds if you really look into the film if you if you go through the entire film and if you really look into the character that's a character is it yeah it? yeah nobody i mean when i when this character was offered to me uh, i consulted a few of my friends and my my immediate cousins and they 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 advised me in a negative way because they were worried for me yeah. you know but um, my father and my husband, they said, you go for it. If you are an actress, this is, if you want to be a serious actress, this is the character. If you don't play this, then don't play ever. <laughs> they said, don't go, do ever. So I went for it. But nobody said anything negative about it. Uh, you know, nobody after watching the movie. So, you know. As you said, the nudity was used for a purpose. Yeah. And uh, I, I'd like to, from that point, like I'd like to, because that was a brilliant character. And I'd like to um, uh, call, recall a bit about your first, very first award, which was in 2006, isn't it? Uh, yeah. From uh, Sarasavi Award. Ah, yes, yes. Correct yes. me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, yes. I think that was for Sulange Nupini, I think. Yeah, that's the best yeah. supporting actress. Yes, yes, Sulange Nupini. Yeah. Uh, I would like to say something about it. Uh, there was a big issue about uh, this movie being shown in Sri Lanka. Yeah. There was a lot of uh, uh, criticism and protests and a lot. So, uh, but when it was uh, put to the Sarsavi Awards competition, uh, they didn't want to uh, give any awards to this movie because there was a big uh, protest against it uh, uh, from the government. Uh, but the panel, yeah, I was, I mean, the director said my role was the main role in the movie, but 
uh, they didn't want to uh, give me the best actresses award so because of that they gave me the su supporting actresses award at that time but that that was a great thing for me whether it was best actress or supporting actress it doesn't matter i mean awards so I think not the, the fact that they couldn't deny giving you an award says a lot about uh, the character that yes, you play yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, can I can I call you like a, a person who would um, I mean who would put in a place where uh, in in terms of cinema you put in a place where you you act uh, in a in a lot of uh, films with attached with so much controversy sometimes why <laughs> yes. weren't your why weren't your first ever movie is still not screened <laughs> uh, actually what happened in that was. There was a technical issue because they tried uh, this uh, like uh, direct dubbing. Direct dubbing, uh, uh, you know what direct dubbing, you dub it while being performed. Yeah, I'm sorry. They, yeah. yeah, yeah. They tried it, but the, te uh, the technical, the, the stuff didn't work. So we right. had to dub it uh, later on. And later on, uh, the director thought, uh, the, the the vision or the story or the uh, that was uh, at that time it was quite uh, relevant but by now he feels that it is not that relevant to the society today it's quite political it was a political yeah. movie um, but I, I really love that uh, character and Asoka Handagama is the person who introduced me to the Television as well as the cinema. He is right. the one who that was uh, Sandhya Deva, right? The movie Sandhya Deva. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Since we are in your uh, cinematic era, as in like not it it has been the same era, but uh, we are we are talking about your cinematic performances in in the, uh, in, in films. Uh, what would be the most significant uh, memorable moments in, in cinema? What would be the it, one moment would you pick? Yeah, actually, uh, the opportunity that I got uh, to go to the Khan Film Festival uh, with the movie uh, Sulangen Upanisha, directed by Vimukti Jayasundara, which won the Camera Do Award, and also his second film, Asing Vate, with which we went for the Venice Film Festival, and we were uh, we got the uh, opportunity to walk on the red carpet with all the uh, all the great people in the all of cinema all over, all the, over world, the world, all over the world, and also uh, my the character that I loved that I played uh, as Gautami in uh, uh, Pokuna, The first uh, uh, day that it was uh, shown as the premiere, that day also is also a memorable day in my life. Yeah, cinema is concerned. So, if I ask the same question uh, in terms of your theater performances, even it could be even producing, even it could be as a teacher, in terms of theater, which uh, is the most memorable me memory? Yeah, uh, I think uh, the day I directed my and uh, uh, premiered my the play I directed first. Uh, uh, was uh, the one of the most memorable days because my mother, I directed my mother and she too played in this play. Uh, this was Garcia Loca's Blood Wedding that I translated and we did it as uh, Sandra Langa Marane. Yes, right. uh, it was premiered at uh, uh, Bishop's College. In terms of Sri Lankan uh, cinema and drama, I would ask you to like answer this question in uh, commonly for both of these uh, industries. Uh, what are the significant changes that you would like to expect in Sri Lankan um, cinema and also theatre? I think uh, with the pandemic all over the world, people will be reluctant to go to a theatre for some time. I think. So already it's there and all over the world. So that is why they are trying to go into different platforms like uh, the digital platform, Netflix, etc. Yeah. So uh, I think through that, our there's a there's a 
lot of young people who are interested in cinema today in in making cinema and that will give the opportunity to a lot of young people to experiment in new uh, new styles and new genres to make cinema so we too should have that kind of platforms but only thing is we have only 22 million of people and then uh, who would uh, produce you know the producers are a great problem for us because who's how are you going to get the money back so yeah. there has to be some kind of support i think or else we must have the money to go into the international market that we have to have the money in the sense to produce uh, mega movies that would interest the international market as well uh, i would say so, there like there are some young artists who are actually making um making it to the global like spilling into the the, the indian market and then yeah. growing in the asian market with sri lankan songs per se but i haven't yes. seen much in uh, the theater uh, i've seen like one song going more than 40 million views within a span of uh, two uh, months where we only have 22 million people but yeah. uh, i think the the the, the theater industry as well as well as i think cinema should both explore that uh, the global x factor what uh, could push sri lanka into that global uh, what could sri lanka which will be the the turning point that sri lankan cinema could spill into the global area and then that global platform uh, yes. i think that's a, a that's a big discussion that we can have with a lot yes. of veterans like you yes. um, and even including young uh, new upcoming artists and yes. producers yes. is highly important in in this discussion i guess yes uh, the thing is uh, song is about 1 to 2 minutes yeah, so know. you know a movie is and the money that is involved and uh, is uh, it has uh, a lot of serious uh, you know uh, other uh, commitments so because of that i think uh, but i everything evolves with the time yeah. and everything changes with the time so maybe this pandemic will give the people uh, new uh, ideas to yeah present art in different now but we we say theater is stage and live theater has to be live but audience has to be live that is the connection that gives uh, theater a special uh, feeling you know uh, but who knows it may also be digital one day it might be right. digital it might go digital uh, but uh, yeah so maybe we time we have to change with the times we might have to change it, it is probably pandemic is a time that uh, innovation is not an option it's a, it's an essential element yes. in uh, yeah. in part of like especially uh, the part of the the industries that are challenged by it, right. especially the industries like uh, cinema and theater yeah but you know actually cinema and theater is a is a cultural uh, cultural element where they bring people together people together is as actors and the performers performers work as a team and the audience come with families and friends and you sit together you have popcorn ice cream you watch the whatever and you discuss about it have yeah. a little dinner so this Going brings communities communities together people together where digital platform is you can watch it on your phone all by yourself yeah. inside the washroom <laughs> yeah you know that's the that's that human interaction and and that discussion that we have around it right i think the world today is becoming isolated people are becoming loners right yeah. and people don't understand each other's problems issues uh, you know you see today what is happening in uh, kabul you know it's yeah, it's uh, so. it's it's really terrible to watch you know we are human beings we are supposed to be yeah. the most intelligent uh, animals on the planet and what's happening i mean so what i think art should bring people together not 
people apart. So that yeah. is very important, I think. Now, my next question is around that because you are uh, you are the director of the Playhouse now and then you, uh, you engage a lot of kids in acting classes and, and your theatrical studies. How this aspect of, uh, you know, the future of this uh, will be affected and what, are, what is your mission and goals in terms of, you know, carrying that work forward? Yes, actually, when my mother uh, formed this institution in 1980s, uh, her uh, vision was to uh, impact children and youth to uh, view the world from uh, the widest perspective. So uh, to provide children and youth with a, uh, uh, like they give the, the opportunity for them to perform, uh, to relieve themselves and also educate the children through theater. Education is not the formal traditional way of educating uh, the children where you are in a frame and inside the classroom and go on memorizing and answering exams. I, I don't believe in that kind of education. Theater can give children much more, much more in one performance. You can give them the language, the music, the dance, the mood, uh, the feeling of coming together, solving problems. So many things can be done in one theater performance. So. Uh, so uh, we we have different uh, different let's say courses and activities for children uh, and uh, we perform for them. Uh, our, when we say we perform for them, we have professional actors performing for them in our children's theater. So we don't get children to perform for children. When we go to, sometimes we are invited by schools to uh, do a production for them. Then we get the children involved because it's not very good for children to go on performing one character uh, for more than two to three times because it could be, it could get into their own character and they might, you know, uh, it might affect their psychology as well. So yeah. um, we have activity classes for children where we get them involved in all uh, forms of uh, art, like music, art, uh, painting, um, uh, singing, all these things uh, in one uh, whole uh, uh, activity uh, class. So uh, we, we allow them to be free and do whatever they like and discover themselves discover themselves. Uh, so um, we have a lot of plans in for the future as well. W one more thing I have to tell you that uh, three of our productions are in the national curriculum. Uh, right. uh, yes, as uh, texts and uh, uh, to study uh, theater as well as literature through these texts. Uh, so we have been performing uh, till not last year, till 2019, we have been performing in schools. Uh, so, but it has stopped for the moment, at the moment, everything has come to a standstill. And uh, so uh, we are planning again, maybe in one year, one and a half years to get back to our, uh, at least in new normal, see how, would, how we could carry on with our work. And next question is, what character did you not play and that you would like to play and why? I have not played a lot. <laughs> I have okay. just done a few characters. So I have so many characters that I would love to play. One of them would be to play uh, either a politician or a wife of a politician, but that character should be the main character. <laughs> hey, nice. Nice. That's, that's a fantastic answer. Uh, and uh, this question is probably about, uh, okay, for the future, I think you're already doing this, but what heritage do you wish to transmit to Sri Lanka? Yes. Uh, actually, uh, we would love to uh, 
actually what we love to do is that uh, to imbibe in our children uh, the cultural norms that we have in our in our environment through the theater we do so that uh, they learn the folk songs the folk law uh, the the sounds of the drums and you know the folk singing and all these things uh, to bring them all together in in one place for our children to get involved and also have something of their own when they go out to the world uh, you know uh, to say you are sri lankan everything together my mother used to uh, travel a lot uh, for theater workshops and uh, discussion seminars and whenever she went she always either sang a folk song or danced and the people who would be, they would love to see different different uh, colors of the world you know different shapes of the world different melodies of the world everybody would love to see so i think we should have something of our own uh, right. so when we get yeah you know so yeah so, uh, i have a i have a follow up question on that so how important is it like you mentioned the fact that you've been doing seminars your mother has been doing seminars across sri lanka what were the resonance like what were the uh, the, the recipe, recipients uh, immediate feeling and what do they want in terms of uh, especially like you know there would be a lot of girls and boys at young age and one of the major problems i see in sri lanka is you know the the girls and boys are, are being uh, put on to schools in in, in different uh, uh, schools like on either it's boys schools girls schools i know that they, it's being changed slightly uh, here and there right now um, but with with this what were the things that you would like love to bring to them and about you know to talk about in in the productions that you make and especially um, the productions that you take on to you know perform in around sri lanka yeah uh, we always uh, when we have workshops uh, actor training we bring uh, all together and you should see how they mix together and what a lot what a lot of contribution that they can give together not as uh, girl schools or boy schools you know when they come together they are so creative so creative and that also brings the uh, the communities together you know it it's a, it's a it's symbolic you can bring communities together now i have been working in the university of moratua in the town and country planning department and uh, they every every year uh, second year there is one um, uh, subject that they offer as drama where there are tamil muslim and sinhala uh, students there so when i do this drama uh, course you all these people come together so much that on the final day of the production they cry because they don't want to leave each other you know we have so much prejudice prejudice it's only prejudice once they are put together they know that we are one we are one so we must we can do so much through theater by taking them to we have to start from the small preschool grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 you know we, we we have to go to the roots and start there this is this is these are our plans to get i think uh, one one uh premise that we both can agree is after the the civil rift the civil war the reconciliation hasn't done properly in the kid the minds of kids and and especially there were generations that has a little interaction uh with the war but they are suffering from uh the repercussions of the war. yeah yeah uh, even they are, they probably even if we do not do this right now the yeah. future generation might also be affected with this yes yes now actually uh, our countries have no plan they have no plan for anything for whatsoever so they you can't expect a, a plan for reconciliation you know they should have started reconciliation from the very next month 
I mean, yeah. if they gave it as a, a, a subject or whatever, it was schools. There could have been vast, you know, difference today. In, in, I mean, the Muslim riots started, riots or whatever started uh, after that. I mean, yeah. it's not the people who are doing this. It's not, uh, the, the prejudice is not among the people, normal people. It is injected into the people, to the society. So even that can, we can overcome that if we give you give the right uh, right uh, uh, outlook at the very beginning of life for the children now exactly. actually uh, in in some, some colombo schools um, uh, there are all all uh, communities children of all communities are together they don't even remember that this is muslim this is tamil this is i, I never remembered i had lots of tamil and muslim friends we never thought of it even whether they go to the mosque or whether they are muslims or the, we were so much in love with each other you know this was in the uh, 80s you know till the 83 riots came we we never thought of them as muslim or tamil or anything like that so actually education can do a lot art can do a lot to bring the country together so i don't know whether the uh, the system will allow it the system yeah, also has to allow rather uh, yeah so rather the all of this is hidden under a political premise so yes. uh, if this can change i mean the future of our generations future of sri lanka needs a more unbiased more uh, you know as kids, they need to explore all uh, communities, all vulnerabilities as kids and learn through them. And we have to enable kids uh, in that right platform in the right way. So yeah. um, I think it's, it's a fantastic point that we can end our conversation with. But also, I would uh, love you to, uh, you know, remind a little bit from your uh, past to present, the notable people that you would like to mention at this particular time. Uh, the close ones of you who has been there with you uh, to, you know, showcase this is Kaushal Fernando, but these are the people behind her. Yeah. Uh, first of all, my parents and uh, then my husband, Dr. Chandan Alugye, he's been the pillar by my side, pushing me all the time because I always try to, you know, uh, give up and you know be only a mother sometimes uh, so uh, then uh, the all those theater directors and movie makers who gave me the opportunity trusted me like um vimukti asoka handagama prasanita nage satyajit maitipe and so many others uh, so many even if i haven't mentioned and uh, Sugata Pali Sila, Darbasri Banda, Naika, KB Herat, and uh, all those, and my friends who have always been with me and encouraging me all the time uh, to do good work, better work. And uh, so, and my sister and her family also. <laughs> right. So, uh, Kaushala, it's very, it, it was very nice to have this chat with you. And uh, we are from, to let, tell you a little bit about us, uh, we are from Renaissance Sri Lanka. Uh, for all the viewers who are joining us uh, for the first time to this event, uh, we believe in developing ecosystems around Sri Lanka by connecting individuals like Kaushalya and uh, much more people who could actually provide a uh, better outcome, provide better education for people through their own expertise and we also talk about a lot of other things like business ethics uh, and also uh, apart from the social activities that we do in the uh, society so um, we would love, love to uh, continue this work so we would invite all the people who are watching us uh, watching this program live today uh, to take a look at our platform which is a unique uh, platform to donate for the betterment of Sri Lanka. Uh, we do have all our information, the projects that we do, the events that we do, and then the things that we want to bring into light all listed in our website. We want to do much more uh, to our country uh, and together with a lot of people around the world who are interested in uh, Sri Lanka, who has been to Sri Lanka and who 
has a great, great uh, interest in seeing, seeing Sri Lanka grow. So thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much, Kaushalya. Uh, it, it was a very lovely session. We got to know a lot about uh, you yourself and the past, uh, and we would love to uh, hear some more from you. And hopefully we'll get to see you in person very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah. Thank you, Isuru.